Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about giving up. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, at what point would you give up on a software engineer who is trying very hard to improve but doesn't improve as fast as you would expect? When, uh, when we can't meet our goals due to their performance, that's when. Uh, so usually the way that I do this is that uh, I, I I try to not have too many expectations. Like it's basically impossible to not have any expectations on people, and some people are slower. Like it's but it's very difficult because some people are really slow to learn in the beginning, but they have other qualities that make them make up for it, and then they get really fast later. And some people are really productive early on, but they cause a lot of duplicate work. Uh, there are a few flavors of that where you know you have someone who is quote unquote a rock star, but they're problem is that they can't adjust their workflow so it just turns out like they produce really shitty code really fast for example things like that it really comes down to what I, what, do, what do I need from this individual like what type of system are we building are we building like a quick dirty thing or do I need someone who's a little bit more stable and can like do quality checks and like you write tests and all of this good, good stuff that you might need right so it's down to the specific role right but the benchmark that I usually use is well, I try to. I always try to ask my managers first, like what, like if they have a preference. At what point would you say that uh, we've invested enough in this person, uh, or like do you have some threshold for like to sort of get a vibe for like how strict do they want me to be? Uh, but if you just ask my personal uh, personal thing, it is down to. Uh, do we meet our requirements? And I measure this in the... Well, I really don't have a nicer way of saying it, but uh, in it was, of course, I mean, when I started out, it was different, but then I didn't really, I wasn't in a position to make this judgment call in the first place, but now I am. And uh, I find that usually the time when I see that I need to replace a person is when I can't uh, they they ca they add work for me, usually, or they add work for the other software developers. Where I see that we are being delayed on key deliveries, or we're being delayed on things, uh, to a point where, if for example, if I know that uh, on average, a software developer is able to meet expectations, like they can produce the necessary code roughly on time or like they're always delays but you get the sensation of usually this person will deliver and it will usually work and this person here will take five six times as long on everything than everybody else and that's usually fine as long as we can sustain it and everything else works because it doesn't I, I don't I never create a competition by the with the software developer. I don't care how long you take to do something as long as it is working like in that it is of the quality that we need because as I said some people might be used to working in a certain way and it takes a time a time for them to adapt but I can't give that luxury to an employee or to some of my one one you know the people that I work with if I don't have it I can if my manager says that yeah you need to ship faster or you like so forth and so forth or you need to keep get this thing out the door by this and this deadline and I see that well for us to be able to do that we can't actually, this person can't actually make that happen. If I um, involve another person, let's say I see they get support, then it works. And we try that a few times and we see that there's a consistently pattern that they can't actually meet expectations without some of the other developers uh, compromising with their efficiency or so forth. And I can see that that happens for basically any tasks we, uh, tasks we give them. Then we have to fire them. It's that simple. Uh, because uh, it's uh, unfortunately the case that some in this varies guys sometimes uh, I've seen this happen and it's not just with juniors and because the juniors think that it's always down to what they are about and because they're not experienced and stuff like that but when I hire a junior I have the same sort of deal like I know that they're gonna be super super slow and so forth and so forth and I know that they are gonna be nervous and I know all of these things because I used to be a junior too and I train them all the time. But this is still, it's true for seniors as well, guys. I've worked with many, especially in the more recent time where like, we, I've had to fire 
seniors with 10 years of experience because they can literally not perform at the level that we need them to perform. Because if I'm hiring a senior, as I've told you guys before, that doesn't mean that I just don't, oh yeah, this is a checkbox, they're senior, now they're in the clear. No, they have to fucking perform. And they have to perform at the level where basically if I can, depending on the, t on the, on the job now, which is, as I said, it depends on the project. If I'm in, a, in a one project, they can afford to go into code monkey mode and sort of just do whatever, like do shit, because that's the way that that team is operating. But in another team, they might have to take, be engaged in a way that they are not used to. In other words, they have to take responsibilities and not just sit in their corner and code away and then sit and wait and roll their thumbs if they're not handed a next task. And if you have that, especially this is just extra uncommon in, say, startups and stuff like that, where literally, like, you will just get the task and they say, fix it. And then it's up to you to figure out how to do it. And if you can't deal with that, which are quite a lot of that K, it's a little bit more chaotic. A lot of seniors can't do that. Then I have to fire them as well. Because the circumstances that we find ourselves in are structured in such a way that they have to adapt to the situation. And if they can't, I have to pull them. It's the same thing where, you know, Imagine doing that in the army, having some person who's like, I don't know, really, really good with a rifle. But all of a sudden, they, like we're in like a close proximity to the enemy or something like that, and they need to use a pistol, and they go, no, I don't know how to, I don't use pistols, or I don't use like atomic weapons, or I don't use grenade, like it's some other tool that I need to survive the situation. Then everybody dies. Then you have to basically get rid of that person immediately, because you need someone who's flexible enough to adapt to what is necessary for the, for, for the current situation. That is the thing that I look for. If I can't see that, and basically everybody else has to carry this person, regardless of the situation of what we, like when we try to fix things, we usually try to accommodate different, uh, different needs. If that's not working, then they have to go. So what I want you to take away from this is that I usually g get rid of people who, even if they're really li nice and I really like them, uh, when uh, the overall task uh, at hand is delayed consistently or we can't rely on them to pull their own weight within the group. And we usually put different skills, uh, skill levels at different thresholds where, as I, it's, you mean, it's the same thing. If you, are in, if you and your family are going to move, you're not going to expect your kids to carry as heavy boxes as your husband or wife or something like that. You put different expectations on different people, right? But if you see that your kids are not helping at all or they're really dragging their feet, you're going to be a little bit annoyed with them. It's the same thing here. If I give juniors tasks and literally nothing can go out the door, even after quite a while of working, and I see that the I can no longer afford to take my own time to support them, then they have to go and we have to hire someone with more experience. But the same thing is true with seniors. If I have a senior who I can't just tell them, can you please do this thing and trust that it's going to be done and that it's going to be done without me having to redo the work or something like that, or, you know, it's not going to be up to scratch. And that's something that keeps on happening without, uh, and we, as I said, we can, we can afford to, to do this for a certain amount of time until we no longer can afford it. And when we no longer can afford it, we have to get rid of them. Uh, that's my be benchmark. If I see that uh, we can't deliver on our goals due to uh, when uh, due to the fact that whenever the specific individual is involved, we are not uh, we, we are either need, forced forced to pair them with someone who knows what to do uh, consistently, even after quite a while, uh, or if or they're basically never able to solve anything uh, on time or like. As I said, like they literally take time from other people to be able to execute on something, even after doing the job for quite some time, then we have to get rid of them. Because unfortunately, and it depends on, as again, circumstances. In some cases, you need them to basically be able to work by themselves immediately. And in some cases, uh, you can afford to have a slower individual because it really is down to like your money and your time budgets. Do you have what it takes to sustain like a working relationship? And in some cases, as I said, guys, I have people who are slower and sometimes it's faster, but they're still good people and they fit and they have all these different, because a person is just, it's not just down to how fast you are. It's about other things as well. But the long and short of it is it's like resources. If you have the resources or you don't have the resources. And if that's the case, you're going to have to let some people go. Have a great day.